Hey, it's Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. This is going to be a really detailed, intricate video all about the Roland Bridgecast, which is a device that was unveiled at CES 2023. Roland have been kind enough to send me a free copy of this to have a play around with and do a little bit of a review on. Here's what it looks like. It's absolutely beautiful. Feels really, really nice. We're going to be doing a full unboxing within this video, but there's so much more that I want to cover. I'm going to be doing an unboxing within the video. I'm going to be showing you how you can briefly set the hardware up and the software. I'm going to be talking a little bit about who this product is actually aimed at, what its competitors are, a little bit about pricing, and then obviously some of the features. We're going to be testing some of the things as well from the software, and I'm going to be giving my recommendation and review and feedback all about the Roland Bridgecast. I've gone to a lot of effort to research a lot of things here, including having meetings with Roland about this product as well, including giving them some feedback and so on and so forth. So hopefully you do find this really useful. If you do, take a second to hit the like button below. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like, and let's go. Okay, firstly, a little bit about Roland themselves. Well, Roland, you may not have heard of because they're not currently very big in the gaming scene, certainly in terms of the devices that they give to streamers and gamers. However, in the audio world, Roland, a Japanese company, has been around for more than 50 years. They're incorporated in like 72 or something like that. And this is a really good company that's known for doing high quality audio equipment, including mixers they're very big in the instruments world drumming keyboards or i don't know all kinds of stuff like that this seems to be their first real big effort to break into the gaming market and they're going straight for streaming here and it makes sense for them to do that because they've got a lot of experience in software and hardware for mixing so this essentially is sort of like a much smaller simpler version of what they kind of already do elsewhere tailored to gaming this device itself was released something like a month and a half ago at c Yes, 2023 and has already won some awards so that speaks volume but i really want to know if this device the bridge cast really lives up to its expectation and the hype so we'll do a little bit of an unboxing video here to be honest with you there's really not much of an unboxing video it's just basically the device and the few wires that come with it there's a USB C to a USB 3 or maybe a USB 2 connector that comes with it it's quite a long connector I thought it was quite cool that within the box they also include a USB C to a USB C just in case you don't have any USB 2 or 3 slots available on your PC they seem to be a premium these days on PC because people plug in so many devices into their PC, especially you streamers out there. Overall, this is a really premium feeling product. It looks good. It feels good. Fits nicely on your desktop. And I'm just going to throw up a quick comparison about how this looks in comparison to a few of the devices that I have on my desktop. These aren't all audio input devices, but quite a lot of these will manage aspects and elements of your audio. There's quite a lot of buttons on this device. Some of these buttons and knobs I felt like were not really that necessary. Things like having a knob for the pitch and the format just seem like a bit of a waste of real estate to me but overall I really like the fact that you've got a physical switch on the Roland Bridgecast to switch between your audio and also the stream mix so you can make adjustments to your audio only or the stream mix audio separately you can do that physically without having to go into the software that is a huge bonus and USP to this product slightly disappointed to see that you didn't get a 3.5 to a 3.5 jack to come with this because it's quite obvious that this is tailored to gamers. All PCs have an audio input, which is a 3.5 jack on the back. And clearly this Roland Bridgecast does have a 3.5 jack. To me, they should have just included that 3.5. However, that only costs a couple of pounds to buy. And I'll link below if you want to purchase that. It's just a link to an Amazon. Here's just a quick look at what the Roland Bridgecast looks like when you power it on. Nice little animations with the LEDs, sort of like a fancy P cocking from the device here. I do quite like this. I think it's just a snazzy little thing. Preview about the back of this device. You have a headphones or headset input. You've got an auxiliary output. You've got a secondary line output as well. We've got an XLR mic input, which has a very good preamp in there. This device has an internal DSP, which basically means when you translate this into non-nerdy speak, that the sound processing, the signal processing for the sound takes place inside the 
device rather than on your PC. Roland do sort of say that this is a unique selling point and whilst it is, they're not the first to do this and it's not a major selling point. Most streamers are going to have a pretty good quality PC and in reality that's not a major selling point. Okay, it's great, it's a nice to have but it's not a major selling point. What is a bigger selling point is the fact that you will not need a cloud lifter for your XLR mic because the preamp can give enough power to the XLR output up to 75 decibels. So this is really, really a benefit. For comparison, the GoXLR Mini gives a 72, so it's slightly higher, but the GoXLR itself is already quite high. Most audio management devices like this would only go up to about 65 decibels, and therefore this is brilliant because it just means you don't necessarily have to buy a further device to increase the power from your microphone signal. It's just a nice to have, and you know you're getting a good quality Roland preamp with this device. Finally, we've also got the console mobile PC switch here, a USB and a 5 volts input as well. So if you wanted to power this device separately rather than your PC, you do have the option to do that. So setup of the device, really, really easy. You've got your connection to the PC through USB-C to USB. So you simply plug one end into the Roland device and the other end, the USB, into your PC. Got the XLR input from your microphone. So how is the Roland Bridgecast actually pitched to people? Well, it's meant to be an all-in-one solution for premium live stream audio, professional audio streaming interface and mixer designed for online gamers. So this is specifically designed with streamers and gamers in mind. Packed with secret weapons to take out the competition, including dual sound mixes, vocal transformer effects, musical playback, sound effects, and support for a broadcast grade mic and headphones. So they're really built building in some decent quality hardware into this piece of kit. I've translated this into a few key selling points of this product. First of all, it's dual bus. What does dual bus mean? Most streamers or gamers are not necessarily going to know what that means. Very, very simply, it means that there's a set of mixer for you, you to listen to. So how sort of loud are your gaming, your system, the music, the microphone, everything for you, and then a separate bus, so a separate audio mix for the stream. Just means there's two concurrently running outputs or mixes of stream that you can work with. Now, this isn't something that's completely unique to Bridgecast, even though it's one of the main selling points of this product. For example, the GoXLR has a matrix that allows you to interchange different things between a personal mix and between a stream mix. So the concept of dual bus for gamers, for streamers is not new. The difference with this product is that there is hardware level control. You can switch between the two and change the knobs and the levels on the hardware without having to go into the software and make changes whilst you're streaming. That's actually quite an important thing and that's definitely a feature that I use a lot on the Go XLR. So being able to do that physically in a few split seconds rather than having to go into the software mid-game is quite a big selling point. It's also got a voice changer and FX built into this. I don't really see these as the main selling points but I know a lot of streamers like to play around with sound effects. Most people will be using something like voice meter or voice mod if you're going to be playing around with the voice side of things. So there's software available that can do a much better job than what this does. What I really like about this is that there's multiple highly customizable audio and EQ profiles that you can set. Now, the detail that they've built into this is as much, if not more, than any other gaming product out there. Certainly in terms of hardware that's tailored and targeted to gamers and streamers, this is probably the most complicated. That's a sort of a, a double-edged sword. On the one hand, if you want that level of detail, it's great. You can have it. You can highly tune your audio, every single detail about how your mic sounds, how your game sounds, and so on and so forth. But most streamers and most gamers are not necessarily interested in that. However, that's not too bad because there are also some simplification settings and some default profiles that are already built in the role and Bridgecast. Sometimes it can feel like they're blinding you with science a little bit with this product. Also, just to translate about the device side of things, they're basically just saying it is really high quality hardware going into this kit. And I do believe that that is the case with this. Feels good. It sounds good. Yeah, overall, definitely can compete with all of the other audio devices out there that manage audio for streamers and gamers. So what does this product actually compete against? Well, there is the GoXLR and the GoXLR Mini. I personally use the GoXLR Mini and have done for about two and a half years now. I've got loads of tutorials all about the GoXLR Mini. There are some things that this device does that both do not do. For example, the GoXLR Mini does not have a de whereas the Bridge
bridge cast from Roland does have a de which means you can get rid of those pesky S's, the snake sounds that are in your microphone. However, the full-size GoXLR does have a de The Roland bridge cast is also trying to compete against other audio devices and audio mixers for gamers and streamers, the high end of which would probably be something like a Rodecaster. And also they're trying to compete with other more general stream management devices, although not fully. They're only partially competing with things like the Stream Deck, especially the Stream Deck Plus that has the little twisty knobs, and also the Loop Deck, the Loop Deck Live S, and also things like the Scarlet Focusrite products. I'm just going to talk a little bit about pricing now. The Roland Bridgecast comes in at £259 in the UK, $299 if you're in the US. So how does £259 or $299 compare with all those other things that I've mentioned in terms of the other options out there. Well, first of all, the Go XLR Mini is £159, so significantly cheaper than this. But there's a lot of stuff that the Go XLR Mini does not do. For example, physically switching between the broadcast mix and the personal mix, all of the uh, reverb settings and the, the effects, and also just the hardware that's baked into the Roland Bridgecast is probably better than the Go XLR. For example, I suspect the preamp is better on the Roland Bridgecast than what it is on the Go XLR. The full-size Go XLR comes in at £446 as of today, which is way more expensive than the Roland Bridgecast. Now, I would compare the functions of the full-size Go XLR and the Bridgecast as being the closely linked and the closely matched to each other. And the fact that the Go XLR full-sized is significantly expensive than the Bridgecast here, really a lot of people should be choosing to go for the Bridgecast over the full-sized Go XLR. However, when it comes to budget, if you want something cheaper, it's possible that the Go XLR Mini might be a better option for you if you're not as bothered about some of those other USPs that I've mentioned. For example, if you're happy to switch between a personal and a stream mix using software functions, functions rather than physically on the device, then maybe the GoXLR might be better suited to you. The Stream Deck Plus does have the knobs that allow you to adjust lighting and audio levels and things like that. But really for this to match the GoXLR and the Bridgecast in terms of capability, you need a preamp and you need an XLR input. And for that, you're going to need the Stream Deck Wave XLR. The Wave XLR is a separate product that sits on your desktop and has that knob and the XLR input in the back. When you combine the cost of a Stream deck and the wave xlr it becomes more expensive than the bridge cast so physically the product really is absolutely brilliant i love it it feels premium it looks nice it's just well yeah just look at it it's beautiful from a physical point of view i have absolutely no arguments at all about this product they've packed a lot into a small amount of space and it really is very compelling unfortunately i do think that the software is not as good as it should be this software does need some improvements but thankfully i know that roland will be able to improve the software over time overall i got the feeling that they've kind of rushed out the software here if i'm totally honest it doesn't look and feel as nice as some of the other audio management software out there. It's just not as intuitive. It doesn't feel like it helps you as much and visually it just doesn't appeal to gamers or to people that want to have a simplified audio setup. So when we jump into the software here, first of all, we've got the option to go into the menu or the level meter. The level meter here has a switch and when you press the button on the GoXLR, you can switch between the two. When I press the stream mix versus personal mix physically on the hardware, we get a mix that changes to the other side here. So this little broadcast icon here is essentially your stream mix. And then you've got the icons on the left hand side here, which is the personal mix. So I can adjust these levels to be different for me as to the stream output. A couple of other things, the mic setup here is really, really quite detailed. As I mentioned earlier, there's a huge amount of gain that you can get from this physical hardware here. I've plugged in a Shure SM7B dynamic microphone, and it does exactly what I would want it and need it to do for the Shure. Or SM7B. In my experience, I didn't need a cloud lifter with the Shure SM7B into the Go XLR. However, there are other audio devices that would have needed a cloud lifter to get that extra gain needed. That being said, I am quite a confident loudspeaker, so that could just be my own natural voice box gain that's built into <laughs> everything that I do here. We've got mic cleanup here. So this is just really to set up your microphone, including some detail or non-detailed view of what your microphone microphone EQ should be like. There is a huge amount of control over this. We could control the audio levels as though we were audio engineers.
is. Now, some feedback I did give to Roland on a call was that it would be nice to see the waveforms in here whilst we're doing this EQ. Now, Roland did rightly say to me that some audio engineers have a philosophy that you should only ever hear the sound waves so that you can pinpoint certain parts of it and increase or decrease the amplification of those frequencies. However, we're talking about gamers here. We're talking about streamers. Very, very few of them, a small minority of them will have any degree of significant experience with sound engineering. To be able to listen and spot those frequencies as a streamer or gamer is unlikely. I think they should have built in the, the, the visual audio waves as well because this is much easier to do when you can see where there are bangs or where you can see when there are hums and things like that that you want to cut out from your microphone. But there's a lot of depth here. You can pinpoint specific frequencies and the depth of those frequencies and then the audio level of those frequencies. So if I want to accentuate a certain frequency and pinpoint that, or if I want to suppress a certain frequency, I can do that within this software. It really is high quality. I would say the nearest thing to this that I've seen so far would be the Beacon microphone and the Beacon software. However, the Beacon microphone itself did come under fire from a lot of different creators that the quality of the hardware wasn't as good as it should have been. I was very impressed with the level of control over this. It's one of my favorite parts. We got the usual stuff, low cuts, suppressors, compressors, and of course the de So I've tried my best to set this microphone up to be almost exactly matching my GoXLR profile. I had a couple of difficulties here and there, but overall it's fairly simple and straightforward to set up. Main feedback would be that there's a lot more detail and you've got a lot more control with the bridge cast versus something like the Go XLR. So that's definitely a plus point of the bridge cast. I've got the gain here set to about 49. As you can see, it can go all the way up to 75. And that's what 75 sounds like. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this is the GoXLR. These would be my standard settings for the GoXLR, but hopefully you get a good feel for the differences. I've tried to uh, replicate as much as possible all the settings that I have in my GoXLR Mini. Back to the Roland Bridgecast, I just wanted to show and illustrate some of the effects that you can get. So you can have different profiles here. There's a toggle to turn these on and off, and you can even do that on the hardware as well. There's a physical button to turn on the mic effects and turn them off. So I'm going to press the button to turn them on. Test, test, test. Well, that's the super low voice. <laughs> we'll just scroll through these. Hello, hello. Reverb. Uh, this is the maximum reverb. We've got high voice. <laughs> Personal favorite. We've got a third voice. And then we've got the super low villain voice. This is a really cool part of the product that I really enjoyed. Now, I'm not like a professional gamer, but I know there are a lot of professional or aspiring professional gamers out there. With this, we have profiles that accentuate certain elements of certain games. VLRT stands for basically Valorant. I think for copyright reasons, they weren't allowed to put the actual name of the game in here, but it's pretty obvious what that is, Fortnite, Call of Duty, or a general first-person shooter. These have been essentially sort of tailored to the game sounds. So the engineers at Roland have made audio profiles, EQ'd specifically for those games to accentuate certain parts. So really, this is almost like a pay-to-win device. It's the first device I've seen for gamers and streamers that does this. And at the price point that it's at, this is a really quite an important, unique selling point. Now, important to remember that not everyone's going to care about these functions, but there'll be a section of gamers that will really care about this. And this genuinely can give you a advantage over other people. These are just the ones that are set up from Roland, but you can make your own. Here we can customize color profiles. For example, if I want the first knob to be green, I would just simply do that. So it's nice here that if I want to, I can change the color of these knobs. We can also remap the source buttons that you would normally have to mute or unmute, we can assign them to specific tasks. For example, if I want my mic to mute just to me when I press that button, I can do it there. This just means that there's a high degree of control over the buttons on the bridge cast. Next up, we've got profiles. So here, the default profiles are for a dynamic mic, the voice change, reverb, headset mic, and condenser mic. We can edit all of these EQ profiles as much or as little as we like. And next up, just the system here. One thing I would say here is I did have trouble updating the firmware on this so when you come to updating and setting this up you'll need to click update here i'm gonna leave on screen now a url that you need to go to to get the most recent firmware version and the other thing as well is once you've updated the firmware you do need to take out the power 
to the bridge cast and plug back in the bridge cast. That just allows a power reset, which means that the firmware can then take effect. I found that I was getting looping here and an error message, which meant that the firmware was not updating. Actually, at one point I had firmware 0.00, .00 which was driving me absolutely bananas. So there's a lot that I've covered in this video. Overall, would I rate, would I recommend the Roland bridge cast? Well, from a physical point of view, it looks and feels beautiful. There are some criticisms and I will go into some of the detail of that in a second, but overall I do like this product and I do rate it and I do recommend it. I particularly like it if you are someone that wants a high degree of control over the audio on your stream. There are certain things that this device lets you do that you cannot do with the GoXLR, cannot do with a Focusrite or a Stream Deck or whatever. This definitely brings much more control to your fingertips if you want that control. However, what I would say is if that type of control and detail scares you and you're not willing to put the time in and the effort to get those things right, this device might just overwhelm you and get very frustrating for you, particularly at the moment because it feels like the software is in its early iterations. Changing the levels in the settings doesn't always allow a plus one increment change. I've noticed that some of the settings you'll move in the software will have plus three. And actually, when you're giving someone this level of control, you really want them to have those plus one increments to really fine tune exactly what they're doing. The volume levels on the lighting. Now, this is kind of personal preference, really, but before you can see the audio levels on your personal or your stream mix, You've got to like twist the knob up or down and then the lights activate on the knob and you can see what the levels are. I'd like those lights to just be there all the time so I can see what the level is on either of those mixes. What I'd like to see is maybe some switch that allows you to turn them on or off all the time. So just a setting in the software that allows you to always have the lighting on or always have that lighting off. It's only a small thing, but I know with the GoXLR, for example, there are lights that show what level the faders are at. A small nuance that I didn't really like about this is that they said that the device, you can have different face plates and customizations to it. I don't really like that they've used this as a selling point because first of all, you can't buy face plates for this from Roland themselves. All they do is give you a kind of like a link to a blueprint where you can go out and get a printed version of this. But more of an alarming thing about that is when I went to download the blueprint for this, I got a little message to say that I was waiving my warranty on the product. If you're going to have customizations as a unique selling point of the product, and you're going to sell the product that it can do that, you can't then, you cannot do it. You can't have it that the warranty is wavered as a result of doing that. It kind of really annoyed me that they did that. If I was Roland right now, I would be removing that waiver and allowing people's warranties to persist if they're going to use that as a customization. Things I'd like to see inside the software, some quicker, simple updating process for the software. This should be two or three click and done. Actually, I had to go and get different downloads and so on and so forth. This is a much better experience with the GoXLR as an example. It will find the update, it will download and install the update. It will do all of that for you. I'd like to see tool tips, guidance, tutorials built into this software. I've been very critical about the software side of this product. However, overall, I do love this product. It's brilliant. I would use it myself. As you can see from the audio test, the quality is definitely there as well. Ultimately, it's all about personal preference, so I'm really keen to see what you guys think of this product. Okay, so that was the Roland Bridgecast. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the insight I gave you in this video for this amazing device. Overall, I do like the device. The software just needs a little bit of work, and then I think this device will really come alive. It definitely adds some things that no other product on the market currently offers. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you later.